and I want you to hear these two guests of ours. We have Juanita, we have Johnny on the show. We appreciate you coming on the show today. What are you smiling for? Well, it's just so good to be <laughs> here with you, and I can't wait to tell everybody I can about the great things Jesus has done. Johnny, maybe you can just say some of the limiting things that were in your life. I had epilepsy as a child. I developed uh, encephalitis. I had many, many health problems. I didn't go to uh, school from seventh grade through the end of twelfth grade. Uh, I had homebound instruction. Somehow or another, I got well enough that I was able to go to college, and I ended up graduating with honors from college. Then, a little later, I started developing panic attacks, and I had panic attacks for 20 years. It, it's hard to imagine someone facing their worst fear every single day of their lives, and that was what it was like for Johnny. But during that time, we built a business that was listed twice as an Inc. 500 company, um, and uh, has been fairly successful in different ways. And that was God's grace. God chose to use Johnny, even in his weakness, his medical problems, to do that. I came across a fellow who's become my best friend who uh, said, you've done everything you've done to, that you should do to get better in heaven. He's a psychologist. And I think you have a physical problem. I think you need a proper diagnosis. He sent me to see a medical doctor. They found that I was having epileptic seizures in an area of my brain that dealt with anger and panic. And I used to tell her, I can either get angry or get afraid. It was really strange. So as a Christian, I'd control it and I'd get afraid. And uh, they put me on uh, an epileptic medicine and uh, my panic attacks went away. You know, we look at the natural and we look at the limitations. And uh, when you're looking at limitations, you say, oh, that person can't do this and I can't do that but God doesn't have any limitations. And so he looks at us and he looks at what he wants us to be. And when we listen to him and we follow what he's speaking to in our heart, sometimes it's just taking opportunities that, that come up that might just seem like happenstance, but that's God working in our lives to do something new, new and neat and different and uh, uh, things that we couldn't do ourselves. So that's the grace of God working in our lives. You're in a thought. You're, you both are aware that he loves you. Yes, very that much so. That thought came right into my head, and I know that to be God right now. When did you have your encounter with God? My grandfather was a pastor, and aunts, aunts and uncles were missionaries, and everybody thought I should be a Christian right from the start. And at an early age, I told my grandfather I wanted to be baptized. He was a Baptist pastor. He asked me a lot of questions. I could give him all the right answers because I was always in church in Sunday school. He baptized me, but you know, in my high school years and college years, I got a long ways away from God. I found myself at a Billy Graham film. Wow. And they gave an invitation for people to publicly, right in front of everybody, acknowledge they needed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I started getting up out of my seat and halfway up out, I stopped and I sat back down. And you know why? I was ashamed, I was afraid. I thought, what kind of sins will people think I've been committing? Aren't I always in church? Aren't I always in Sunday school? They thought I was a pretty good person. I knew I wasn't, but everybody thought I was a pretty good person. Then I realized that Jesus said, he who is ashamed of me in front of other people I'll be ashamed of that person when I come back with my father's angels. But he who confesses me before men tells other people that I know him, that he's my Lord and Savior. I'll acknowledge him before the Father when I return. Oh. <laughs> and so for a couple of years, I turned down, it must have been 200 opportunities to publicly confess Jesus oh. as my Lord and Savior. And I didn't do it. And I kept remembering Bible verses. The soul that sins, it shall die. Hmm. What should it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And I'd ask Juanita what these verses meant. Now, at that time, I was not a believer. <laughs> and so I couldn't be of any help at all. And then we found ourselves in a new city, in a new town, at a little tiny church. And we went to a 
Billy Graham film on a Saturday night. Now, somebody who doesn't want to do something public, why do you go to a Billy Graham film? I don't know, but I did, because <laughs> God wanted me there. And every Bible verse that was, had been troubling me was brought out in that movie. God had been preparing me for two years to see that film. And I thought, they're going to give an invitation at the end. They're going to ask people to come forward in front of everyone to say, I want Jesus for my Savior. And I thought, what am I going to do? And I thought, I just can't do it. <laughs> and right then, Jack, Jesus spoke to me right inside my head. It's the best I can do with a description. And he said, if you love me, why won't you stand up for me? Wow, good word. My fear just vanished. I jumped up so fast, <laughs> it wasn't funny. And I looked to my right, and there was my wife standing beside me. Wow. Reminded me of another Bible verse. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. And that was the other thing that had held me back. I didn't want to go to hell, but I wasn't certain I wanted to go to heaven without my wife. And I didn't really know where <laughs> she stood. You have to come to God by yourself. You have to make that decision. What was, what was happening to you when Johnny was uh, wrestling with these things in this uh, theater at this point? My background was, I was raised in a non-Christian home. My father was an atheist. He tried to convert other people to atheism. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, being a Christian, that wasn't part of my experience. Of course, uh, when Johnny and I started dating, we went to church and all, but God wasn't part of my life. And uh, I don't think I really had a full concept of what it meant at the time I stood up to. But it was not too long after that a Christian couple began to disciple us and speak into our lives. And that's when I really started to understand who God was, what he wanted to do in my life. And um, everything changed then. You know, I went from living my own life relatively unsuccessfully to living a life for him, which was so much more fulfilling. You know, I perceive there's couples watching this. You're watching this show, and all of a sudden you're looking at people excited about the reality of God. And uh, you might have had a background like Juanita, no God, you know, no reality of God whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, God, the Holy Spirit, just started talking in you like he talked in Johnny, in your head, in your heart. Yeah. It's time. You heard it's time. And a Bible verse that says, what does it say, now? Now is the acceptable time. Would you pray with them because they're ready? It <laughs> is so important. This may be the most important moment of your life. If you don't know Jesus, this is the most important moment of your life because you need to turn to him. God says that all who come to him won't be disappointed. And you may be like me. You may have gone to church. You may be like her who didn't. But Jesus wants your heart. He died to pay the penalty for your sins. Men pounded nails through his hands. He only allowed that for one reason. It was necessary. The only way that you could be forgiven for your sins. But you have to receive it because it is a free gift. To as many as received him, to those he gave the power to become the children of God. So let's pray yes. and become a child of God. Yes. <laughs> God our Father. God our Father, yes. We ask in Jesus' name. We ask in Jesus' name. That you forgive me forgive for me. my sin. My sins. I believe, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. Died for my and sins. And that he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. I now take him as my Lord and Savior. I turn from my sin to follow you with my whole heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, <laughs> if you die, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Find yourself a Bible-believing church and get involved. Read the Bible. Jesus loves you, and he wants to become a part of your daily life. And the Bible says if you believe that in your heart personally, it's not enough. You've got to confess it with your mouth, that it's true. There's a number on your screen. Do you see it? And I want you to dial it right now. You just tell him, I prayed that prayer. I'm not ashamed. Jesus is now Lord of my life. Would you do that right now?